So we have an example drawing here, uh, and I created this drawing, uh, and I, I, there's at least five things wrong with it. There's probably a few, bit, a few more. If people want to dig into it, but there's five big issues here. Can anybody find any of them? Does anybody see anything immediately jump out at you that you know this is this is absolutely wrong? This is not a good practice, or it doesn't make sense. I'd say the perpendicularity with the uh, position tolerance being the same on that 1.5 plus or minus tau. Yep. Yep. That's a good one. Yeah, we'll cover that one. That's a really good, that's a real good one that jumps out right away. Anybody else see any issues that jump out to you right away that don't make sense? I always like to start with any drawing review or even designing a drawing. If you're a designer out there and you're trying to start with a blank view, right? I like to start with my datums. That's the best place to start. It's kind of a good place to to kind of get your footings, your your groundings. Um, even if you're interpreting a drawing, or maybe you're doing a drawing review, you're doing some red lines, you're in a red line meeting. Uh, I always start with the datums. Do they make sense, right? Are they functional datums? Can I identify what the datum is? Is it functionally used in other datum feature or datum reference frames? Datums are a good place to start. So we'll start with the datum features. Uh, datum feature A, and we're doing A first because all of the feature control frames are saying A, B. So A is kind of primary here, right? So we're going to start with A. A is being identified right here with this datum feature symbol. Attached to the flatness. Flatness is attached to this surface right here. So A is identifying that flat surface as datum feature A, right? And it's a perfectly flat plane as a datum, right? This The surface of this part won't be flat, but it'll create a perfectly flat plane as a datum. So that's good. That checks out. Datum feature B. Can anybody tell me what datum feature B is? Datum feature B is attached to the center line. So we know it's a center line axis, and this is a pretty cylindrical flanged part, right? It's kind of everything's, everything's coaxial. Uh, but which axis, right? Which axis? Are we identifying datum B as right? If we look at this part, there will be or there will be coaxial air of all of these features. This outside diameter will have an axis right here. This uh, inside red diameter might have an axis right here. The stepped smaller diameter right here, this green one might have the axis right here. And then the bolt pattern itself, right? The center of that bolt pattern is going to have its own axis. So we've got a lot of axes going on, and in the real world, they will not be coaxial. Right, there's going to be some orientation there. There's going to be some form error. So, which one of these axes is datum axis B? And again, I see this all the time on drawings. Just simply putting it on the center line does not tell us which one of these features is our datum feature. Which one of those axes is our datum axis? It's too ambiguous. This is outright wrong uh, in the ASME, in, in any standard, in any right uh, ISO or ASME. We don't know which axis. All right, so that's issue number one, in my opinion. Big issue there. Any questions on that one? And I'll show you how to fix these moving forward. I just want to identify these, these issues first. So now let's look at this control here. We already mentioned that this is going to be an issue. We have a position tolerance of five thousandths, right, with respect to A and B. And we also have a perpendicularity tolerance of five thousandths with respect to A. And we already pointed out what's wrong with that is that position will already control perpendicularity to A to five thousandths of an inch, right? So position's already controlling perpendicularity. We don't need this down here. We, that you're, you're, over you're, you're not over-defining, you're redundantly defining it, if you will. Uh, a lot of times we see something like this, where it's actually ten thousandths on the perpendicularity here. Well, you'll never allow it to get to ten thousandths because five thou of position's going to control it to no more than a perpendicularity error of five thousandths. So by putting 10 thou perpendicularity, you're being very much um, misleading in the fact that it'll never even get to six or seven or eight thou perpendicularity error. You can't undo what's already been done with position, right? So you're already controlling that orientation error with, with position. So you don't need this down here. Sometimes, and this is another issue I see very often, is we wouldn't even see the position here. And what's the issue with that? If we just saw a perpendicularity of 5,000 with respect to A and no positioning, what's, what sort of issue arises there then? The 
it's underdefined, right? Nothing's controlling its location. Nothing says that this little, that this outside step diameter can't be here, have a coaxial air. Perpendicularity is only controlling orientation. It can move wherever it wants unless you have that position in there. And we see this a lot. We see a lot of lacking position on drawings trying to define just the orientation. Well, I really care about that perpendicularity, so I'm going to lock that in tight. And they just, they jump right to that, not knowing they actually need to control the coaxiality of that back to datum B, wherever that datum B might be. So again, sometimes we don't even see position on there. It's just underdefined at that point. So let's move on to this symbol right here. Does anybody see anything wrong with this position call out? Let's walk through it. The position is trying to control this pattern of six holes diametrically, 5,000th with respect to AB, right? So that means each one of these six instances can radially devi deviate away from true position by two and a half thou or five thou diametrically, right? So radially, if this is our part, and we're going to come in and define where each one of these need to be, right? We know the ideal location of each one of these holes with respect to the datum axis and this datum plane, right? Each one of those holes needs to be perpendicular to the to the, dirt, the datum plane. They need to be radially spaced. Uh, where's my basic dimension? They need to be radially spaced one and an eighth, right? So we know the radial distance. Oops, excuse me. And we know where they all need to be, right? And so this axis can deviate two and a half thou this way, two and a half thou this way. This one can deviate two and a half thou, two and a half thou. We know where they can go. So what's wrong with this, right? So it's good, right? Everybody see, everybody think that this, this example uh, position on six instances is good. Does anybody see any issues here? Got a plus or minus one on the six times 60? Absolutely. Maybe? Yeah. When we're trying to define true position, we need basic dimensions. So if we're saying that this hole can deviate two and a half thou from true position, well, that's radially one and an eighth away from datum axis B. But as a pattern of holes, we need to know where each one needs to be with reference radially, like angular, polar dimensions, right? That's 60 degrees, basically. So hole to hole is what this pattern control is doing here. So we're controlling hole to hole. Well, if we're controlling hole to hole location diametrically five thousands, and we also have an angular tolerance here, that's over defining it. That's saying we can have angular tolerance plus minus one degree here, right? But we also have a radial deviation this way. Well, that's that's two competing tolerances. So this is illegal to do. You cannot redefine the true position of these things. Positions completely controlled using this this here. And we see this often in polar coordinates like you see here. And we see it a lot of times in rectangular coordinates too, where you have a position like this on a pattern of six holes. And let's say the pattern is look, looks like this. And then somebody would come in with plus minus dimensions here with also a position call out on the six of them. That's over defining it. These need to be basic dimensions. Does that make sense? So basic dimensions have to define true position. And if you don't have drawings on, if you don't have basic dimensions on your drawing and you have a nice handy note that says query the CAD model for missing basic dimensions, that's a good way of covering yourself and making sure you have enough information. But then you got to make sure to give whoever's interpreting this drawing the CAD model. Um, so make sure you have basic dimensions defining everything as far as position is concerned. It's one thing we commonly see uh, competing locating plus minus alongside of position tolerance. Questions on that one? Okay, so that's issue number three. We got two more to go. What's wrong with these two callouts here? Does anybody see anything wrong with these two callouts? The one inch ID and this three inch OD. What's wrong with these two callouts here on this drawing? And maybe so much not so not so much what's wrong with them, but what's missing. They're underdefined, right? 
just like we told you back here when we dropped off this position call out, right? If we drop that position call out out, we just only control with perpendicularity. It's an underdefined feature. It's missing information. It's not being controlled in position at all. So this one we see all the time, unfortunately, on round cylindrical parts like this, shafts, flanged features, um, we see size dimensions on every diameter, which is good. That's one part of the equation, right? But what you're missing is the position air, the coaxial air. Just because they look to be coaxial on the drawing doesn't mean they have to be or can be perfectly coaxial to our datum axis, right? There needs to be something that tells us, look, this diameter, this outside diameter can drift away from our datum axis so far. So a lot of the drawings, again, like the shaft, the, the, the flange parts, the round parts, coaxial features, counterbores, um, a lot of those issues are left open. They're left open to interpretation. And it's anybody's guess as to what the coaxial air of this outside diameter can be with respect to the data maxes. There's nothing, there's no standard that tells us what rule to follow as far as how much position air that can have. So drastically underdefined, we're not controlling location at all, but we see this all the time. So again, this outside diameter can have poor coaxiality air with respect to this inside diameter or the axis of the pattern, the pattern of holes, right? So issue four and five here, uh, underdefined. So let's go ahead and fix this drawing, right? Let's go through and fix these five errors. I've updated this drawing now to fix all five of those errors. Issue one was that the datum feature symbol for B was simply attached to the center line, right? We had this datum feature symbol down here being attached to B. We didn't know which one of these coaxial features was actually datum feature B. Well, I went ahead and attached it to the pattern of holes, right? Uh, I dropped off the B. Originally, there was a B here. I dropped that off. I actually made this pattern of holes datum feature B, which is a really good way to start. Um, a lot of times pattern of holes are the feature on the part that stops translation, right? And rotation, right? A is still this top plane. That's good. That's a that's a good that's a good datum feature to pick primarily. Then the pattern of holes is going to go ahead and stop that final six degrees of freedom uh, by locking in those translations and rotations, right? So a uh, good one to pick. So we picked that. And this is controlling position, uh, sorry, perpendicularity back to A of each one of these holes. But since it's a pattern of holes, it's controlling the position of each one of these with respect to any other one, right? So it's controlling the location of each of these holes back to the other holes. And again, we have basic dimensions defining those locations, basic dimension on the pattern, basic dimension on the angles. We know where those holes need to be with respect to each other, right? And that's it. That's all we need to care about. We don't care about where this pattern of holes is with respect to this diameter or this diameter or this diameter. Uh, those diameters are with respect to this pattern of holes. So it's the, it's the opposite, right? We don't need to locate these holes. Everything else is located to them. So we fixed that issue. Issue number two is that perpendicularity is a redundant control to add after position. So we just simply got rid of it, right? We didn't need that 5,000 perpendicularity. It was already being controlled position, right? Now, if we want perpendicularity of 1,000, we certainly can do that. We can put perpendicularity of 1,000 back to A, below that position feature control frame can be just fine. It's called refining it. We care about orientation more than we care about position. So leave the position loose, refine that orientation. Issue three was that we incorrectly had a location dimension and a tolerance with plus minus angle in addition to the position control. Simply just change that to a basic dimension, right? Uh, change that to a base dimension, make sure we've identified true position, the location of each one of these holes with respect to each other, uh, using basic dimensions, and then allow the position tolerance to control the location and how much it can deviate from true position. And then issue four and five were that the position of the diameters appear to be coaxial, right? They looked to be coaxial. They needed to be coaxial. That was their ideal location. But they had no position tolerance telling us how far away from perfect they could be. And so we simply fixed it by adding position tolerances to each of the size dimensions. So we added this feature control frame and this feature control frame up here. And again, the value in here, uh, usually designers will have to go through a little bit of tolerance workup to figure out what sort of positional air we can have, right? How much position air can we have before we might have minimum wall thicknesses? Or, you know, if you got too big and had too much position air and this flange were inside another housing, well, how close are you going to get to that housing? 
you can do those boundary calculations. And if any, if any of you are in our advanced courses, you know those boundaries are called virtual and resultant condition or inner and outer boundaries. Uh, we can calculate what those worst case boundaries are for this outside diameter and then possibly for the housing that this might be sitting in and do those boundaries intersect. If they do, can, are you okay with that? Do you want intersection? Is this a press fit sort of situation? Um, how much minimum clearance do you want, right? You can do those sort of calculations that way. This value that you put in the, the feature control frame is going to directly associate to that. Questions on this drawing before I move on to a new example. Our goal is to be your best source for GDT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDNT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.